Good morning, everybody at Chalk Mercantile and Surface Anthology. It's Jane, trying to get comfortable. It's really sunny here today, which we're not used to. I hope you're doing well, and today I wanna show you guys how to use Iron Orchid molds, some chalk paint, and make over this little metal bucket that I found. It's really cute. It's made in the USA, which is really surprising. And I think I got this at Lowe's or Home Depot. I got a bunch of them and they're really useful. But I wanted to show you guys how you can totally transform this little piece. So the very first thing we're gonna do is paint it. So I'm gonna grab my white paint, I think I wanna do this. We might do a little blending. Let's see how this goes. All right. I had my entire camera and everything fall earlier. So I put two giant weighted things behind me on the camera stand and I just wanna adjust this. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab my little brush and dip it in. Now, if you guys have ever used chalk paint, you know how it sticks to everything. And that's exactly why we love it. Now these little buckets, you can even put some holes in the bottom and use them as planters. How cute would that be? I haven't tried this with any other paint. I know there are people who have used milk paint and it's worked. Um, I haven't, I, I done it with glass and milk paint but not metal, but I wouldn't be surprised if it worked. All right, so that took all of 30 seconds. I'm just gonna hit it with the blow dryer, wipe my hand off here. And you've got to be careful with metal because you don't want to um, heat up the metal and then burn your hands. All right, a little bit. We're getting a really nice crack on this because I'm using a blow dryer. So all the areas that I applied the paint a little bit thicker begin to crack and I love that. All right, let's put on our second coat. And with whites, because there's less pigment, you're always gonna end up applying a little bit more than a colored paint. Also, a lot of those clear colors, those really kind of clean colors, you might find yourself applying more than um, a couple of coats because they don't have the titanium pigment in there, which is actually white. Um, they're use, they use a clear base. All right. Now I realize I didn't bring my, my spray bottle, but if you wanted to do a little blending, let's see. If I grab my gray chalk paint, let's see if 
if I'm able to do this without my spray bottle. Oops. Now this is what happens, by the way, you guys. See that rust around the rim? Because I had I didn't put this in another container, which you should do. If you're if you're not gonna finish your paint, put it in a FIFO bottle, which I love a ball jar with um, the new one, it's not an antique one, something like that, and that will really help. Let's see if I can do this. It's already drying, I don't know. Hmm. Switching over from one studio to another, you can lose so much stuff. And I'm just pouncing with water after I do that. This brings back the days of art school and watercolor class for sure. So I'm just pouncing on that gray paint. All the way around. And the other thing that would have been really good is my natural sea sponge, which I do have. Let's use that. If you guys saw my... Um, tutorial for doing over terracotta pots with milk paint. It's such an easy technique and it's just so authentic. All right, so I'm just taking my wet sea sponge. This is a little one. And I'm just tapping and kind of blending the two. I let the water drip a little bit. This is a fun way to practice this technique before you actually do it on a piece of furniture. All right, I'll just rinse out my sponge. I'm just hitting it with some water. Get a little blend going. All right, and we're gonna do more painting after we put the mold on. So let me dry some of this because I'm really making a mess. And you can use the dryer, by the way, you guys, when you're using water like this, you can use the dryer to force the drips down. rustic little bucket. So now I'm going to move the paint aside and grab these iron orchid molds, which I just love. I really, really do. 
So what we're using are the iron orchid molds, some cornstarch. You have to have cornstarch. In a pinch, I've used milk paint powder, um, but you need something between the mold and the clay. And then you need your iron orchid clay, the paper clay. Look at how I have it wrapped up, and this is what you need to do, because if you open a package of clay and a little bit goes a long way, and any air gets to it at all, there's no reconstituting it. There's no getting it like soft and pliable again. So it has to be kept in an airtight container um, wrapped. Okay, so I think what I wanna do, and I've got a lot of these molds. Um, the laurel I just adore because it has the laurel mold, the bumblebee, the crown, the bow that I always use. But we'll give this a shot and maybe go around the rim. And actually, I'm gonna just dry it a little bit more. So you take your cornstarch and a soft brush, dip it in, and let's see, which one should I use? We'll start with these. You put it into the mold that you're going to use, just brush it around. And these molds, you can use them, they're food grade, silicone. So you can use these to make cookies. I think you can bake them up to 425. You can um, use them from Sugar Arts, that kind of thing. You wouldn't use the same ones you're using for your um, crafty DIY paint and stuff and keep them separate. Grab a piece of this clay, which is beautiful stuff. And I'm just going to kind of roll it out. And what I did forget, oh no, I can use this. You need to have a straight edge and something soft like wood, plastic, a credit card to kind of push off the clay. And you'll see as I do that. So you push the paper clay into the mold, press it into that shape. I'm gonna need a little bit more. And again, little projects like this get you ready to use this on a piece of furniture. And these molds are beautiful on furniture. Mirrors, um, dressers, if you really wanna jazz something up. All right, and then I just take my straight edge and I just kind of push off, sort of from the middle out, the excess clay. Easy peasy. And save all this for the other side. To get these out, all you have to do is you take your mold and you bend it and you'll see the form just pull right out. So there's half of our laurel and I'm gonna do the other side, which I already put the cornstarch in. And again, you just press it in and the reason I don't recommend using like a piece of metal. There's a little edge on these molds. And if you gouge it with a metal, like a putty knife, you're gonna ruin the mold. So use something soft. All right, there's our other one. And again, we take the straight edge. I'm gonna start at the top. 
I kind of go with the design. And people are using, I think it's like epoxy for these molds. Um, I have never done that. I, I love the paper clay, but they're using different kinds of like <laughs> chemicals. And it makes a, a really nice mold, I guess. All right, so there's the other side. And you just take your mold and you see how a little bit of clay goes a really long way. And this pulls right out. So now where should we put it? I'll pick a side that's nice and dry. And you see how I'm not waiting for these molds to dry. I'm gluing them on while they're still wet. And I'm going to paint them while they're still wet. Okay, let me put this in something to keep it from rolling. There. So, it's this is a pretty big mold that, of course, I picked. I think that'll be good. Let's give it a shot. The gravity might pull it down, we'll see. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue. The other glue that I love is the Elmer's Wood Glue for this. Put my sponge in water so I don't ruin it. Okay. Hmm. Let's just do this. There we go. A nice little blob. I love this glue. It's really just super thick Elmer's glue, but it keeps everything in its spot. All right, and then I'm gonna use a little natural bristle brush. This is my glue brush. And I'm just gonna dip it into the Elaine's, turn my wet mold over. And get a nice coat of this all over the back. Just brushing it on. My hands are too short. <laughs> ah, ah. Here we go, get it all the way to the end. And then place our mold. Now you wanna press this. These are more resilient than you think. Get the glue off my hand so I don't get it everywhere. But you're gonna press this down really, really well. And you won't ruin the design, but you want it to make really good contact. And then I can wipe away the, glue, the excess glue if there's any coming out. I will be finishing this so it won't be such a big deal, but we want to get rid of as much as we can now. So there's half of our mold and it's really stuck. Thank God. <laughs> it's not sliding anywhere. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. Grab my brush and my Aileen's. And when you're doing this, take your time brushing the glue out. Don't rush through it like I'm doing.
because you want it to make good contact Same thing, and you take a second to place it. And press this down. I'm gonna use my natural. <laughs> Sponge to wipe off my hands. Ah. Okay. And really make good contact all the way around. So there is our little wreath on the front of our bucket. And I have to add something in the middle really quickly because I want to show you guys how to um, paint the clay again while it's still wet. So what should we add? We'll add the, how about the crown? That's nice. Why not? So we put our cornstarch in, grab a ball of clay. Don't leave it open like I do. You really want to keep this moist. Okay, and then you just press it in. People are using these to make jewelry. How beautiful. Chocolates, cookies, ornaments like me, which I love. Okay, we put it in. Just start at the middle and pull away the excess clay. And there's our crown. Then the mold, and there it is. How beautiful is that? Let's put that right in the middle. Something I'm really interested in doing with this is with these molds is making a wreath. I have a wood round that I've painted and I really wanna make a wreath. I might make it with a seashell mold, all different beautiful seashells, um, because you could layer these and it's just so much fun. All right, quickly applying our crown. So look at that, how cute is that? This would be so great at a wedding for favors. Okay, now, how do you paint this, right? We wanna paint, let me clean my hands. Because once you get glue on your hands, that's it. If I were to just leave this to dry, I always paint it wet, but if you need to take a break for whatever reason, don't stand it up while it's drying. Leave it laying down like this. Let gravity work for you. Okay, press it all the way around, looks good. Now we're gonna paint it. So I'm gonna grab my white chalk paint, which I need more of. And I need a small brush. So I'm just gonna use a little art brush, my favorite. And you paint these while they're wet. Let me show you, actually, these little ornaments. In my Merry Makers box, this was like the, one of the first ornaments we made. And this was all done wet, and then we just ended with a silver metallic paint. And look at how pretty that is. And they are indestructible, let me tell you. Okay, so you just grab your paint 
and go over your mold. Now I'm using white, so it's gonna be easy for me because my base is white. So you do have to think about that. You know, do you wanna get fussy painting your um, molds? So you wanna take your time and think your plan through. And by the way, speaking of plans, my website issue was fixed. And if you guys wanna see my new Surface Anthology website, go to surfaceanthology.com. And that's my new website. I'm still working out some of the details, but there's a really nice little freebie, um, a printable for organizing projects. Because let me tell you, I am not the most organized person in the world, but um, I figured something out that works for me and hopefully it'll work for you. All right, so I'm just going around and painting the molds while they're wet. These molds do shrink a little bit as they dry. And you'll see, you want to keep pressing down as you move around. We'll get this side. I've also used gold and silver leaf on these a lot. And man, they look totally authentic. You can make the most gorgeous frames, mirrors with these molds using, I've actually used a metallic paint underneath and then put leaf on top of the metallic paint and it's really beautiful. And this is paper clay, so it's made from wood, paper, so it all kind of just goes together like that. Okay, so there's the mold, the mold's painted. I'm gonna hit these with the blow dryer again, and then I'm gonna show you how I put the metallic paint on. I'm just drying the surface. This is not gonna dry the molds all the way through. That's gonna be an overnight process. just so we can put on the silver. All right. So we just want that surface dry. Pressing down. And then I have some silver metallic paint. It's really beautiful stuff. Rinse out my art brush. I'm gonna see how this brush works for me. Ooh, put your glue brush in water too. Um, I'm really picky about brushes, but let's see how this one works. Take some of that silver offload a little bit yeah. and I'm just kind of picking out the tops right the high points look at how beautiful that is just the top the high points so we don't lose the design and it gives it so much dimension. And you see how super quick this technique is. So I'm using a flat brush. I don't think a round brush would work for this because it's hitting the design Kind of you know just the top points and if you have a round brush 
it's going to get into the nooks and crannies and we don't necessarily want that. All right, now for the crown. And there we go. How fast was that? So look at the front of this little, it was like three or four dollar bucket made in the USA. I hope you still have them. It was at Lowe's or Home Depot. But how pretty is that? And it would look lovely with a plant in it. This would be a beautiful wedding favor as I'm looking at it. I think it would be so pretty. Um, you could do it in Christmas colors, gorgeous. Now what I would do and what I'm going to do to let this dry, once you do your bucket, you just want to put it on its back, so to speak, and you can just roll a cloth because this is round on either side to keep it from rocking back and forth and let it dry. But that's an easy, fun project and it gets you... All the projects that I'm showing you guys are techniques, I'm using techniques that can be used on furniture. Furniture, walls, doors, frames, floors. So we did a little bit of blending. Um, if you wanted to do more, you can certainly do that, you know, with the base here. We used our um, IOG molds with a paper clay, which I prefer. Aileen's Tacky Glue, and then the Silver Metallic Paint, which is just beautiful and soft. And I don't really even think it needs silver leaf, though I can add that on later um, if it's not shiny enough for me. I could definitely do that. So let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions at all. I'm going to be... Um, putting this up on YouTube if you're catching the end of it, and you can also watch it right here on the page again. And the other thing I wanted to show you really quickly is, let me move my mess over here, is the chair, the little antique chair that I began last week. And I have, since we met last, Oh my God, I just put the foot into the <laughs> into the Aileen's tacky glue. So you wanna take that off really quickly. Okay, but I've distressed it. And you'll see some of these brown spots. Look at how beautiful this um, finish is. It's not waxed yet, but remember, we used the beeswax puck. My grandson was over, and he saw it, and he had to sit in it. And that's when this happened, and I love that. It's already beginning to get naturally distressed from wear. So I will be back on again, and I will show you how I wax this. But I love the color. It definitely is a farmhouse look. We used the um, mixture of farmhouse white and ironstone white. Let that dry. We use the beeswax puck and I put on a coat of mora. This is one of my absolute favorite Miss Mustard Seed colors. So there you have it, you guys. Have a wonderful day today. Any day now, now that my website's up, go to surfaceanthology.com. I'm going to be opening up the Surface Anthology membership. I will let you guys know, um, everybody that's on the wait list, when I'm going to go live to really go into detail with what you're going to get in the membership. I already have one uh, person who joined before I opened. He's a clever boy, and I'm really excited that he's in the membership. But I'm going to go live, let you know what's in it, and then if you have any questions, you can absolutely ask me. Um, during my live, you can email me at jane at surfaceanthology.com. Or you could go right over to the website, surfaceanthology.com. If you haven't yet, get on the wait list. 
and and um, I'm really excited about it. So in a couple of days, now that my tech issues are resolved, have a great day today. I'll take some pictures of this and post it when it's dry, but give it a shot. It's it's this is just so easy and so much fun. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. See you soon. Happy painting.